The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Kara Oosteros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Michael Vunch, who is a plant pathologist with North Dakota State University. How's it going today? Good, thank you. Well, that's awesome. So uh, we're here today to talk about some of your research that has been conducted in terms of managing a Phanomyces and Fusarium root rot through some management techniques. Do you want to talk about what some of that research has found? Sure. Um, well, in my program here um, with my staff, what we work on is um, practical and applied disease management research, uh, not only in the cool season pulses, but in other field crops grown in the state of North Dakota. And we're always looking at management strategies that growers can implement tomorrow. Okay, things that they can u- do tomorrow to um, improve their disease management and the profitability of the production uh, where these diseases are, pr- are a problem. And so for the Fusarium and Phantomyces root rot, what we wanted to look at is what can growers do now? Okay, um, uh, you know, developing varieties with reduced susceptibility, i.e. more resistant varieties, is fantastic, but it's not a solution for now. It's a solution for the future. And um, so what we looked at is quantifying the returns to... um, to fungicide seed treatments and the soil temperatures at which those seed treatments give the greatest returns, uh, basically quantifying the returns of fungicide seed treatments relative to the soil temps at planting. And um, and we looked at the impact of planting dates. We know Fusarium and Phanomyces are warm temperature pathogens. And uh, and we had seen anecdotally that planting early seemed to reduce the root rot severity of these of these of these diseases. And uh, we also looked at uh, the we've and are continuing to look at the use of crop rotation. You know, and that seems like a no-brainer. Um, we use crop rotation for many diseases, but uh, Fusarium and Ophanomyces are notoriously long-lived in soils. And so it's always been a big question of uh, just how efficacious crop rotation might be for these root rots. And uh, surprisingly, there's just no data. <laughs> Nobody looked at it. And so, um, yeah, so I, at this point, we now have some pretty good answers on all three of those questions and and how those tools can be utilized to help manage this, this rather serious problems of peas. Um, you know, the data I'm talking about are for peas. Um, um, but I think... Uh, it's reasonable to conclude that many of these conclusions can probably be extended to lentils. So when you're saying uh, planting early, how how early is considered early in order to actually combat uh, some of these diseases? Well, um, you know, we did all of our research with uh, in these planting date studies where we planted at three different dates. The first date was always coincided with the beginning of wheat planting. Not the middle or the landing of wheat, but the beginning of wheat, all right? And, you know, every year that's different, right? Uh, For us, that means anywhere, it meant anywhere from uh, mid-April to late April and almost every single study. There was one study where it was just the soils were so wet and the soil was uh, so gummy, it was a clay-based soil, that we couldn't get into early May. But um, um, but in general, this was mid late April in our region. But uh, really, more informative is because everyone's planting date is going to differ on their on their geography. Uh, really, we were targeting the beginning of wheat planting for that first planting date, and then um, the next planting was always 10 to 14 days later. And this always coincided with what I consider a normal planting date for peas, which was kind of the end of wheat planting. And uh, and then we'd always have a planting date that was late. Okay, <laughs> this is when you get rained out, right? For us, this would coincide to be about mid-May in most cases. And, um, and so uh, we tested these three planting dates in a replicated, randomized uh, pattern. And we did these in studies uh, at the research centers in Carrington and Williston, as well as at on-farm sites uh, with a history of root rot problems in peas and lentils. And uh, at the research centers, we also ran a series of studies on ground with no history of root rot, but inoculated with a a fusarium uh, pathogen. And so, um, 
Yeah, um, but anyhow, early is the timing. Uh, to me, it's when you start planting wheat. That's early. So you were looking at widening crop rotations as well as part of this whole integrated management. Uh, how how wide are you looking at uh, these crop rotations? So we set up uh, crop rotation studies um, back in, gosh, 2014, and we ran this in Carrington uh, in a site that has a severe in a field that has severe root rot problems in peas, and a another site uh, in southwestern North Dakota in Hedinger, uh, where with no previous history of peas. And the idea there is uh, looking at the um, the buildup of the root rot pathogens. Okay, and so we've tested two. Versus three, versus four, versus six year rotations. And we now have data comparing two versus four uh, year rotations and uh, two versus three versus six year rotations. And we're continuing these studies and um, you know, with more time, we're going to have additional additional data. But yeah, we've been testing two versus three versus four versus every six years growing peas. And in that four-year rotation, we're looking at uh, growing peas uh, in rotation with sequential wheat versus peas was in rotation with wheat and another broadleaf. So wheat, wheat, wheat followed by peas, or wheat canola wheat followed by peas, and wheat flax wheat followed by peas. Now, obviously, soil temperature would be a uh, part of this as well. How does it factor into the whole, you know, seeding early, things like that? Soil temperature is the key here when it comes to planting date and how to optimize field pea agronomic performance. When we ran these studies on fields with absolutely no history of field pea root rot, but we introduced the fusarium uh, root rot pathogen, well, that fusarium root rot inoculum was not enough to make the fusarium root rot really, really severe. It was there, but not a tremendous yield limiting impact, okay? And in those fields, there was not a buildup of other root rot pathogens uh, at any significant level. In those fields, the earlier we planted the peas, the better our yields. Okay, and that was the case even when we planted in in fields where the where the soil temperature at seeding depth, which is five centimeters or two two inches below the surface, okay, average five to seven point five degrees centigrade in the week after planting. Okay, so that's very cold. All right, now the thing is though is that um, what we did see is some reduced emergence. Okay, in those very cold soils. And there was a return to using a fungicide seed treatment with activity against pythium and rhizoctonia. All right? And so if you're going to plant into really cold soils, you need that fungicide seed treatment. Now, in those fields with a history of root rot in peas, the root rot that was primary in those fields was Fusarium metaphanomyces. But at those soil really cold temps, the Fusarium metaphanomyces was, was not very active. But we also had quite a bit of Pythium and Rhizoc pressure in those fields. And what we found there was that we got a really big hit on emergence when we planted in soils below uh, 7.5 degrees centigrade at that 2-inch depth. And this is 7.5 centigrade in the week after planting. Now, any grower should be able to kind of predict this. Look at your soil temperature two inches below the surface right now. Look at the weather forecast. You should be able to tell whether or not that soil temperature is going to rise or get lower or be about that same. Okay. And so what we found is that the root rot severity for the Fusarium nephanomyces was greatly reduced as long as the soil temperature was below 10 degrees centigrade in that week after planting, okay, at seeding depth. Um, but the emergence was really bad when it was soil temperature was below 7.5 degrees centigrade. All right, and the sweet spot for yield, where you maximize your yield, i.e., you reduce your root rot, but you didn't have terrible emergence problems, was when you're between 7.5 and, and 10 degrees centigrade at that 2-inch depth below, uh, uh, below the soil surface, i.e., assuming you're planting your peas 2 inches deep. Okay, and, um, and there was actually a really remarkable yield bump. Uh, and, but one of the things that you need to remember is that any time you're planting into cooler soils, especially in these fields with root rot pressure, you can get a really strong response to fungicide seed tree. Treatment. And so what we found is that uh, you needed to plant uh, when your soil temperatures are below 10 degrees centigrade. And if it's a field with a he history of 
of root rot, you should be between seven and a half and ten degrees centigrade. Okay, and um, and now you want to use a fungicide seed treatment. We saw between a three and five bushel response to using a fungicide seed treatment with activity against uh, Pythium and Rhizoctonia. All right, and it didn't really matter what brand you used. Okay, even the generics. Okay, and um, uh, and you need to use both of those. But both of those techniques are not enough. You also then need to have crop rotation, good crop rotation practices. And what we found is that when we um, when we uh, grew peas once every six years, um, and used a fungicide seed treatment, and planted early. We, we were getting 48 to 49 bushel peas in a field with horrible root rot pressure. When we planted every four years, we got 39 to 4 bushel peas with the same practices, fungicide seed treatment, early planting. And every three years, very, very similar, okay, about 39 to 40 bushels. And uh, every two years, we only had 28 to 30 39 bushel peas, okay? So basically, you need to have all those three practices to have decent yields. And in this field where we ran this crop rotation study, we had horrible root rot pressure. I mean, really bad. And so, but you need to use all three practices. You need to plant uh, early when the soil temperatures are cool, targeting 7.5 to 10 degrees centigrade, uh, at that seeding depth and that week after planting. You need to use a fungicide seed treatment with activity against Pythium and Rhizoc. And again, the brand really doesn't matter. Just have AIs with activity against those. Okay, and then uh, you need to extend your crop rotation so you're only growing peas or lentils once every six years. In fields that do not have a history of Fusarium aphanomyces root rot, yeah, you can get away with tighter crop rotations. But remember that if you have a tighter crop rotation, you will be building up these, these root rots. Okay? Okay, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you.